Today is the first event since the late Mike Burroughs passed away. Andrew Sidwell and his Bureau Rat Racers will give him a lap of honor. We are in Darlemoor, England, for the seventh BHPC event of the season. The Streamliners and Velomobiles are the favorites today, as the track is mostly flat but very windy. The first race is a slow race, 15 minutes plus one lap. The track is like a big triangle, with a sharp corner at one end. The track surface is not one of the best, so the rolling resistance will be slightly higher than usual. Lloyd Talbot, on his speed was recumbent, is having trouble to start. After the first lap, Steve March, on his carbon and cycle, is leading the race, and is leading by a huge margin. Gemma Foray in a streamliner on Nigel Slee and his Fuji low racer are in second and third place. They are followed by a group of tricycles. Right behind, the good mans are riding a tandem bike. Malrose on his hand cycle is in second place in the hand cycle classification. It will be hard for him to catch up with Steve March, who is incredibly strong today. Lloyd Talbot managed to start, and his bike is pretty stable now. Mark Howard, on his hand cycle, will try to get some championship points, but Steve March, here, will make his task more difficult. Nigel Slee, on his Virgin Low Racer, the Goodmans, and their tandems on Jan Pike, on his tricycle, are fighting for the second place. Colin Waite, on his fully fared bike, is not far behind. Barney Hall is also gaining ground. Steve March is consolidating his lead. The good man seems to have taken the second place, ahead of Nigel Slee on his Fujin Low Racer. Gemma Foray in a streamliner is losing ground, as Colin Waite in his fully fared bag is closing in. But nobody is a match for Steve March on his carbon on cycle, as he will win the race. Goodmans on their tandem bike and Nigel C on his Fuji low racer are still fighting for the second place. Luke Beckwith here is in third place in the Am Cycles classification. Gemma Foway in a streamliner and Dave Minter on his tricycle are fighting for the eighth place. This is the fast race. We need to look at this again. It does look like this is a false start. Oh la 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 la! This should be worth 5 seconds penalty. So the race has started. I'm not having a very good start. But at least it is not a false start. The Velomobiles and the Streamliners are going to be unstoppable. The task at hand is to beat the other unfair bikes. Johan Farwer, on his M5 low racer, is slightly ahead of me. I have to beat him to get the unfair and partially fair trophies, so I'm attacking him straight away. Jonathan on his pace above is in my wheel. I have caught up with Russell Bridge on his no come low racer, who had a seemingly false start, and I'm attacking him. I'm also dropping John Lucian on his pace above. So far, so good.
I seem to have trouble getting the right speed in the turn, as the track is not that smooth. This allows Russell Bridge to come back. So I'm attacking again. Nick Esman in his Alpha 7 Velomobile is leading the race. He's followed by the Bino Streamliner, the not so on the snug Velomobile. After a few kilometers, Russell Bridge on his Nocom and Duran on his M5 Low Racer worked with each other to catch up with me. And I still have trouble with the last turn. At that point, the situation gets more complicated as I don't think I can pull off yet another long-range attack. So I have to wait and see. As they are in my wheel, I'm keeping a slower speed. We only have one lap to go. I'm accelerating randomly to check whether they are tired. And it does not look like they are. This is the final straight before the last turn, but I'm not that comfortable in that turn. Yet again, I'm not negotiating the last turn properly. Russell Bridge on his Nocom is attacking. I'm actually coming back. That is only until we reach the zigzags, where I cut the power as I don't want to go off track. So I have to accelerate again. I'm accelerating to catch up, but the acceleration is not strong enough, and I am losing in the sprint finally. Now is the time for the second slow race. Three, two, one, go! After the first lap, Barney Hall on his low racer is leading ahead of Steve March on his hand cycle. Doug Betwix and Mark Howard are working together for the hand cycle's classification. Nigel Sleek on his Fuji low racer has some work to do if he wants to do as well as in the previous race. Barney Hall and Steve March are leading the race. The Goodmans on their tandems are quite a bit behind. Gemma Foreigner Streamliner is catching up with the other riders. Steve March on his carbon on cycle is launching an attack. Barney on his low racer is dropped. Nigel Sleek on his Fuji low racer on the Pike on his tricycle are battling for the third place. Mark Howard has dropped two backwards on his hand cycle. Here, a group of five people is fighting for the fifth place. Steve March on his own cycle is still going strong in the first place. Nigel C and Barney Hurl are battling for the second place. Ian Pike on his tricycle is in fourth place. Steve March is seemingly unstoppable.
This is the sharpest corner of the track. Jan Pike on his tricycle has just slapped Mark Howard on his uncycle. Colin Waite in his swimmy third bike is right behind in fifth place. Jim Affaway in a streamliner is in seventh place and is going to lap Duke Betwis on his on-cycle. Mal was on his on-cycle, Judy Swallow on her track, and the Goodmans on their tandems are fighting for the eighth place. Nigel on his Fujin low racer and Barney on his Raptor bike are still fighting for the second place. Jim Affaway is catching up with Dave Minter on his tricycle who is currently in sixth place. This is the last turn before the finish line. Mark Howard and Duke Betwish are still battling for the third place in the Encycles classification. Steve Marsh is leading that classification today as well as the race. Ian Pike on his tricycle is in fourth place. He's followed by Colin Wake in sixth place. Nigel C and Barney Earl on their low racers are in second and third place. Gemma Foreigner in a streamliner is in 6th place. Nobody is a match for Steve March on his carbon on cycle. Nigel and Barney are still battling for the second place. Jan Pike on his tricycle is consolidating his fourth place. This is the zigzag that led to the finish line in the first race that we are taking in the other direction. Mark Howard on his on cycle is ahead of Dick Peckwith. The Goodmans on their tandem track and Dave Minter on his tricycle are battling for the seventh place. They are ahead of Malrose on his on cycle and Judith Swallow on her track. Steve March on his on cycle is ahead in the first place. This is quite a commanding performance. Jim Affaway in the streamliner has joined the Goodman's group. Jan Pike on his tricycle and Colin Waite in his fully fared bike are battling for the fourth place. Sheriff Harding here is in last place. It is not yet clear what the classification will be, as Nigel Smith and Barney Hart can still take the second place. The Goodman's peloton is getting bigger, as Jeff Booker on his tricycle is angling at the back of the group. I think he was lapped. This is the last lap. It is quite confusing as the bell started to ring for riders before Steve March, who is leading the race. Nigel on his Fuji Low Racer will end up losing the second place to Barney. Jan Pike on his tricycle will be pulling way for the first place. Jim Affaway on his streamliner at the back to get the better of the boulders. Steve March has won the race. Two, one, go. Now we've got the faster race. The start is less important as it is a longer race. I am following Joran Fauer on his low racer as he is the most dangerous one for the unfaired and partially fared trophies. Plus, I don't want to take unnecessary risk in the first turn. 
Andrew Sidwell on his bureau's rat racer is taking the opportunity to overtake in me. He is followed by Lion Goodman in the Nostril Streamliner. Nick Esman in his Alpha 7 Velomobile is overtaking me as well. The main thing is to take the turn safely as everybody is close to each other. Russell Bridge on his no come low racer is getting ahead of me. That does not work as I can attack straight away. I'm overtaking back John Reed in his three stage Velomobile. And he is not happy about that as he overtakes me back. I'm back next to Andrew and Duran on their low racer. On my tail, I have Dave Griffith in his TF Velomobile. He surely wants to take revenge as I beat him comprehensively in the previous PHPC event. Somehow, Russell Bridge on his no come low racer is here as well. Lee Wexfield in his snug Velomobile is leading and is being overtaken by Slash, head of the Notso, followed by Nick Esman in his Alpha 7. John Green in his twisted Velomobile is in fifth place. Johan on his M5 Loacer is leading the unfaired bikes and I am trying to catch up. Dave Griffiths, his DF Velomobile is launching an attack. It is the best place to attack as we are reaching my favorite part of the track. I am launching a counter attack. It is harder than it looks as the wind is not helping. That is enough to drop Duran on his M5 Loracer. But Andrew Sidwell is still here. My strategy here is to keep Andrew Sidwell with me. I don't want a repeat of the first race, where the two low racers teamed up against me, so I am trying to take turn at the front to keep the pace pretty high. Yuren on his M5 low racer must not catch up. Somehow, David Griffiths in his DF Velomobile is also being dropped. David Griffiths is coming back. David Griffiths in his DF Velomobile is launching an attack. I'm losing contact with Andrew Sidwell as we are lapping Andy Foray in his fully fared King Cycle. So I have to work to come back. Slash is making us look slow, even though we are going at 50 km per hour. The time has come to attack.
I am overtaking back David Griffiths in his DF Velomobile. I'm dropping Andrew Sidwell on his rat racer. And I am being lapped by Nick Esman in his Alpha 7. Liam Goodman is not so streamliner. He's in third place and he's lapping me as well. Lee Wexfields in his snug mobile is in fourth place and he's lapping me with ease. Yet another Velomobile is lapping me. This time it is John Greed in his three slate Aquila Velomobile. I am lapping a small group of unfaired riders Tim Wall on her low racer, John Lucien, and Peso Brothy and Jerry Charlwood on his rat racer. Here I'm lapping Eden Edley, who is riding what looks like a challenge serum. I have to keep a pretty high pace, as there is always a chance Siren on his M5 low racer can come back. Here, I'm lapping Russell Bridge on his Locom low racer, who managed to beat me in the previous race. But he is less dangerous than Buren for the championship, as he only does well in short races. In the end, I'm getting the maximum points for the unfair and partially fair categories, but I am being totally crushed by the fastest pedomobiles and streamliners. Now we have a one lap time trial. There is nowhere to hide, there is no drafting, we are going as fast as possible. I got the maximum points for my category, but Velomobiles and Streamliners were much faster. This is the last race of the event, 2 hours plus 1 lap. Slower and faster riders are all together, I am launching an attack straight away. Nick Esman in his Alpha 7 Velomobile is not far behind. Nick Esman in his Alpha Velomobile is finally overtaking. As expected, Slash is overtaking me as well to take the second place. I am not sure there is something wrong with the Bino Streamliner, but I'm getting surprisingly close to overtaking back without really accelerating. It is strange as it should be going 10 or 15 km per hour faster. Lily Wexfield in his snug Velomobile is overtaking me. He's easily getting close to Slash in his Bino Streamliner. Then comes the turns I don't really like, where Russell Bridge defeated me in the first race. The zigzag makes it more difficult to overtake. Ryan Goodman in his not so Streamliner is definitely slowed down by this zigzag as he does not attempt to overtake me. Mm. 
pas comme ça que je voulais partir. C'est pas comme ça que je voulais tout dire. C'est pas comme ça que je voulais sortir. C'est pas comme ça que je voulais partir. C'est pas comme ça. Que je... Eventually, he manages to overtake me. Very soon, the faster riders are lapping the slower ones. The track is pretty wide, so it is easy to lap people in most parts of the track, except the zigzags on the three turns. David Griffiths in his DF Velomobile is closing in on me. So I am accelerating. But that does not seem to work, as he is still closing in. My accelerations have less impact than on the previous day. It looks inevitable that he is going to overtake me. But I am not finished yet. Every time I slow down, he overtakes me. And this time, I can't fight back. Slash in the Mino Streamliner has taken the lead of the race. And he is lapping me. The race is now like a time trial. Johan in his M5 low racer must not come back. In the end, I was lucky to keep my place, as I was going slower and slower. But fortunately, Andrew and Joran did not work together to catch up with me. Lee Wexfields in his snug Velomobile, Lion Goodman in his not so streamliner, and Nick Esman in his Alpha 7 are battling for the second place. Slash won the race. He was followed by Lion Goodman in his Nosso Streamliner and Nick Esman in his Alpha 7. 